Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, August 11th. Our special guest today is Jeff Bradbury. This topic is Creative Ways to Use Google Slides with Students. Your co-moderators are Peggy George, Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing closed captioning for us. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will introduce Jeff and ask him the newbie question. Well, hello, and welcome to all of you. We are so excited to have the always amazing, fun Jeff Bradbury, who you may know as TeacherCast, joining us today as our special guest presenter. He really has some awesome ideas to show us, and he's going to show us about ways our students can use Google Slides much more creatively that I know you are going to love. Jeff is the coordinator of tech integration and instructional technology coach for a New Jersey school district where he works with almost unbelievably 3,000 students, teachers, and administrators to help them better integrate technology in their classrooms. Prior to his current position, he was a classroom educator for more than 15 years, working with students in grades kindergarten through 12th. It was back in 2011, some of you may have been there, when he created the TeacherCast Educational Network as a tool for working with teachers in his school district. And he has made a global impact on so many teachers with all of his blog posts, app reviews, podcasts, courses, workshops, they're terrific, and he archives them, so you can go back in and check them out anytime. Jeff is also the author of Kid Blog, an introduction to blogging with your students, and uh, he's the creator of TeacherCast University and Educational Podcasting Today. He's an ASCD emerging leader. Definitely a Google for Education certified innovator and trainer, a PBS Learning Media Digital Innovator, a Microsoft Innovative Educator and Surface Expert, and a speaker, writer, podcaster, broadcaster, consultant, and educational media specialist. In his free time, yeah, there surely must be a minute or two, Jeff enjoys teaching, web design, broadcasting, playing viola and violin, conducting, and spending time with his wife, Jennifer, and their three four-year-old triplets that we know as the edu triplets. So welcome, Jeff, and thank you so much for sharing with us today. I'm going to ask you our newbie question. And once you've finished answering the question, you can just take over and jump right in with your presentation. So here is our newbie question. Can you tell us what is the difference between Google Slides and Google Drawings, and how do you decide which one to use? Take it away, Jeff. Click on talk again, Jeff. We're not hearing you. Are we here? Yep, there you are. Well, thank you guys so much for having us today. Um, it, is, it is such a pleasure to be here. I want to say thank you to Peggy and her team for, for inviting me to put this together. And it is certainly so nice to see everybody here in the chat room. Um, what a great morning to be having some amazing professional development. I love the question here. What is the difference between Google Slides and drawings? And here's the deal, guys. It really is a trick question because I always say they're about 95% overlapping. If you can do Google Slides, you can do Google Drawings. It literally is the same application with really two exceptions to it, and that is Google Slides is multiple Google Drawings, right? So when we open up Google Drawings, we have a canvas, 
and slides just gives you multiple canvases. The buttons are basically similar and, and virtually identical. That's the first step, right? Like drawing is one thing where slides is multiple things. And if we have time, I'll, I'll kind of show you some of these differences here. But the other thing in that is that drawings gives you the ability to have a transparent background. So if I was going to be creating a graphic or a logo or something, um, I'd first want to ask myself, do I want a transparent background or do I want the um, item I'm creating to fill the whole space, right? So we know that Google Slides starts you off with just a plain white background or whatever your theme color is, and Google Drawing starts you off with the checkerboards, and the checkerboards in, in graphic design equals transparent. So th th there's two big differences. Again, you know, Slides is multiple canvases, and Drawings gives you the ability to do uh, transparent stuff. So. Um, if you guys are a fan of drawings and slides, check it out. Slides, of course, was recently updated. And um, everything that I understand about Google says that drawings will hopefully be updated this school year. But uh, don't, please don't tweet that one out. I just, th there's, there's a lot of reasons why I say that. So um, let's kind of jump right in here. And, and Peggy, I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to stop me any time. I've got a lot of content here, as you guys might know. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put the link to where we're going into the, into the chat box here. Oh, that wasn't the link here. Uh, Peggy, can you put the, the link that we're going to? So we're going to go to teachercast.net slash creative Google Slides. And let me get my screen share on. And Peggy, can you let me know right now that you're looking at my desktop? Seeing it great. Excellent. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check out TeacherCast.net, you certainly are, are welcome to. We, we, it, it's, it's changed a lot since we last were together here. Um, we are now focusing on three major strands of education. We have our instructional technology stuff, um, it's, you know, it, including instructional technology coaching, classroom technology, uh, lesson plans is something that we're going to be coming out with soon. We've also got a nice channel for STEM education and a nice channel for leadership. And each of those we have some podcasts for. Yes, some, some podcasts for that go along with each of those strands. Now, we also have a great session here on podcasting and web design. So if you're looking at how to make a podcast, we can certainly help you out with that. And if you're looking to improve your brand, your website, your blog, anything like that, we've got some great stuff out dealing with WordPress and also brand new Google Sites. So you want to check out all of that stuff. Now, the link that Peggy put in the box today is to go to teachercast.net slash creative Google Slides. And that's going to take you to this page here. Now, all I want you to do so I can you know, say thank you to you guys for being here. I want to know where you're from. I love that we have a global audience today. Stick in your first name, your email, and I am a... And that's going to take you over to our show notes page today. So take a moment right now and fill out first name, e uh, email, IMA. And if you ever get lost and you want to jump back in, you certainly can. You can always put your email address again in here today. You might also see it look like this page that says um, you've already enrolled in your class. That means you don't have to put your name in there again. But just in case, you can always log back in through that stuff. So I'm going to click on this link here and go to our Google Workshop. I'm going to walk you through where we are today. This, these are our show notes pages. And everything that I'm going to be doing right now is literally on this slide deck. We're going to go through it um, as quickly as possible. But again, Pe Peggy, please feel free to stop me at any time. I, of course, have other great um, demonstrations of this. This is from a couple years ago. But we've got a few things here. I, did, I first did this presentation back in 2013 at ISTE, which was the first time I met Peggy George. I think I got her autograph that year. And then we've got some other neat things here going on. So that's kind of how we're going to walk through everything that we're talking about today. Peggy and I have you covered. We're going to make sure that you guys have the links. And if you ever have a question, you can certainly reach out to me, and I'm happy to help you out. So with that being said, let's kind of jump in here to where we are with being a creative use of Google Slides. Now, many people have used Google Slides, and, and let me just kind of ask the first poll question here. When you guys think of the word Google Slides, um, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you guys hear the word 
Google Slides. G give me a quick answer here. Uh, I'm seeing here PowerPoint. Good. Other things that happen when you think of Google Slides? Presentations. And that's generally the traditional way, right? And usually when we say the word PowerPoint, we think of PowerPoint and Slides being you know, the Microsoft version, the Google version, right? Or sometimes we might think of the word Keynote, because that's the Apple version, right? And presentation. Today we're not going to really look at that version, right? Because what happens? in that version. Generally what happens here, and I'm going to make sure that I'm in full screen here, is you tell your kids you're going to do a presentation. You're going to get up in front of the class and do something. And generally what happens then is your kids are going to stand up in class and the slides are going to look horrible and the kid's going to stand up all nervous in front of the kids and what are they going to do? They're going to turn away from the screen Sorry, they're going to turn away from the class, but they're back to the students, they're back to the audience, and they're going to present exactly like this. Now, I want to see in, this, in the screen, raise your hand if this looks familiar. Hello, my name is Jeff Bradbury. I'm here because I love to give presentations. You can find me at Jeff Bradbury. Today we're going to be talking about the different things that you can be doing in classroom. I'm a classroom teacher, so things we're going to be talking about today. I'm sure we're going to be hands and provide the value and the lesson plans along the time in the galaxy far, far away. People didn't, and people or computers were called the Dark Ages. And, and this might have been something that you are used to as a classroom teacher, right? This is how most people are very, very used to doing things. And then, of course, they always have that ambiguous uh, slide back there. So here's the agenda today. Number one, what are Google Slides? Okay, we're going to kind of redefine what this is. We're going to talk about the advantages. I'm going to go through this very, very quickly here. How to make a great presentation deck. I'm going to show you a few things as we go through here um, and how not not to use Google Slides as a PowerPoint substitute. And what I want you to do is we're going to kick it up today. Whenever we do Google things, um, like when we go to the Google Teacher Academy or when you see Google presentations, the word of the day is slam. So if I hear slam in the audience or if I hear, you know, I, I saw a couple things popping up and, you know, bings and bongs and stuff like that, please. Um, let me know that some of this stuff is new or exciting. I want to hear what you guys don't know because that's what I'm going to gravitate towards. All right. So number one, what are Google Slides? Why, is, why use Google Slides? Number one, we know Google Slides are fully integrated into Google Apps, which means they integrate with Docs, Sheets, Slides, Drive, Keep. Yes, my friends, Google Keep, we'll, we'll look into that. They're universally accessible on all platforms, your phone, your tablet, your Chromebook, your Mac, your Windows. And by the way, it supports offline files. Have you ever been on a bus, like maybe for your homework, and wanted to start a doc sheet or a presentation? You certainly can with that. They're shareable and collaborative. We know that stuff is awesome because you can have multiple people using the same exact doc. In fact, last week Google put out a, a website uh, whole conference called Next, and somebody got up from the docs team and said, you know, here, here's a case study of a hospital that literally saved $8 million in a year because of this collaboration feature. They didn't have to pay people to be you know, using multiple documents and sharing and collaborating. Lots of great stuff on here. They're also publishable. We're going to show you different ways that you can publish and how that's going to be used. And they're embeddable. In fact, here is a, a website I created a long time ago um, where you can see in the middle here, there, we're using a Google slide deck to show morning announcements. So this isn't necessarily a presentation, but this is a way to have a school district update their website without having to actually go in and update their website. So there's a lot of neat things that we can do here. Now, I'm going to be bouncing around. Again, everything that you see, if you're on the slide deck, you have an opportunity to click out and do here. So I want to show you guys this thing here called the Explore Tool. Just, uh, raise your hand or give me a comment here. If you've ever heard of the Explore Tool, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this side of the graphic here, and that's going to open up a brand new tab for us. Now, if you see something like this, we're going to click up here where it says Use Templates. Okay, Use Templates. So that's going to give you everything that we need here for you guys to be successful. And you can see that's going to open up a brand new tab. Now, Oh, let's just all take a look here. These are the Edu triplets from last year. Now, you'll put this for a reason here. This is a one-picture slide, right? Many of your teachers are, are trying to figure out how to make engaging slide decks. 
many of our students are trying to figure out how to put as many animated graphics in their slides as possible. Raise your hand if you're tired of seeing 900 animated slides. So over here, I'm going to do a couple things. I just made a copy of this. Now, here's my little trick here. I have the name. I'm going to put delete me. Now, why am I putting the words delete me? That's because at the end of this presentation, I'm going to have all of these templates in my drive. So this is something that I do so I know not to delete my original copy. This is a copy of what I have. So here I am over here. I'm going to look at this. and I want to make this look good. So now I'm going to come down here, and you're going to see this Explore button opening up. So what I'm going to do here is I want to be able to quickly make a nice-looking slide deck. If I click on the Explore button, this now analyzes my slide and says, here are different options for what this could look like. I could automatically make this full screen. I could put a border around it. I could leave some room over here for text. I can do everything here on the right side. Look at how easy this is. Now, this isn't a Google Slides feature. This feature also has been showing up in PowerPoint and also has been showing up at Apple Keynotes. But you want to, and I think, Present, I think PowerPoint calls it like slide designer or something like that. But you want to look in here because this is a great way for Google Slides to figure out an easy way to do this, right? Our job is to teach the curriculum, not slide design. So there's a few things here we have this taken care of. Now, let's just kind of take a look here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the T. I'm going to add a text box. And I'm just going to start to type a few things here in my text box. Now, I want you to notice what just happened on the right side on the Explore tab. I now have other options. This is now saying, oh, I see text. Would you like it to look like this? Would you like it to look like this? These are easy ways for you to just put a little bit of text on here, and suddenly you're a slide designing wizard, and so are your kids, right? Have them just do one picture, one piece of text, and suddenly you're having them not make presentations. You're teaching them how to provide TED Talk-like present, you know, uh, pictures and images to their presentations. As we know as educators, the less on the, sh on the slide, the more they have to talk. So there's a lot of things going on here. And, and I don't want to, we don't have time to go through the full what is Google Slides. But I wanted to show you guys this Explore tab because it is so, so amazing. I'm just going to come over here and go File, Move to Trash. And let's do that. So that way I kind of clean up behind me there. All right. So here we are back in our slide deck with our Explore tool. Now, the other neat thing about slides is that you're able to export to all of these major applications, from PowerPoint to Keynote to SlideShare. I always try to put my presentations up on SlideShare. It's an amazing community of stuff for slides or for PDFs, right? Uh, we don't think about that a lot in the, in the education world. Now, a couple things here. I, again, I'm, I'm going to zoom past this just due to time, but if you want to click on a new presentation, you can certainly come here, and that way you guys can try these things out. But really, it's about researching, planning, and publishing. But here's the question for everybody. When is a presentation not a presentation? Hmm. When is a presentation not a presentation? Anybody have an answer for that? When is your presentation not? OK, somebody just said an ebook. That is a great way to use slides and presentation tools. Somebody says when it's a performance, and I like that. The, a, a couple years, I keep saying the other day, but a couple years ago, back when I was in my music major days, we took our kids to an adjudication, meaning they went to another high school and they played and they got awards and stuff like that. So we decided a couple things at that point. Um, how many of you guys out there have ever done the thank you cards, right? Like I'm going to have all of my kids write a thank you note, then you stick it in an envelope, you put a stamp on it, and you mail it out. It's nice, kind of old, and the problem is that doesn't teach kids anything. It's good for the 80s, but, you know, so we decided to use Google Slides. I brought everybody down to our Mac Lab, and we created a thank you note for the, uh, the, the field trip that we have. And so as I'm opening this up here, this is our field trip thank you letter. And again, let me take a moment here, DE. Um, so what we did here is we asked the kids to just do one thing, write a thank you note too. 
the conductor, the bus driver, the parents, the whatever. And so what we did here is now we have an interactive thank you note. You can see here on the first slide we have a picture. And I can't play this for you right now, but on the second slide we have a video of the event. And then we had other slides where the kids were saying, you know, thank you for this, thank you for that. And then we have another, you know, graphic here. You couldn't do these kinds of things if you were just doing the traditional, you know, grab a piece of paper and send it to somebody. And then the other thing is that someone's going to take this and go, wait, wait a minute, why do I have 80 emails or why do I have 80? They're dating myself. Why do I have 80 pieces of paper that I now have to read? No one's going to read that stuff. But now, guess who can read this? The people you send it to, your principal, your superintendent, mom, the bus driver. You do the activity once, and you have things. So then we noticed that the kids decided to change the fonts, change the graphic. Now they were having a little bit of fun. Now we're looking at a slide like this, and you're seeing things like, OK, teachable moment here, everybody. If you were the teacher, what would you do to make this slide look better? And I hope everybody says, well, it's a dark background with dark text, and you got red on red, right? So now you're building teachable moments into these things. This is a presentation. Now, again, you're going to look at this slide here and go, OK, well, wait a minute. The graphic is overlapping, right? So maybe, maybe we do something fun. I'll give you a little uh, slide step. I'm going to make this graphic bigger. I'm going to come over here to the crop tool. And right to the right of the crop tool, it says mask image, shapes. And now I can do a mask over that shape. So now I have a triangle, right? So maybe I can drop that down here or something like that, right? So, something that's a little bit out of the way. So there's a few things that are in there that we can use. So this was a great way to showcase what the kids were learning. And also, they were learning how to do Google Slides without me showing them how to do Google Slides. So this was a really, really cool um, way of getting the kids to be responsible for themselves. So again, when is a presentation not a presentation? When you're doing something to give back. Right? So this is kind of where we are. Right? That presentation was crowdsourced. It was personal. It included audio, video, photos. It was certainly embeddable. And by George, sorry, Peggy, no pun intended, it was shareable. It was absolutely shareable. So let's kind of keep on that vibe here. Um, Peggy, before I go on, are there any questions that might come to mind? Yes, I did have a couple of questions already in chat. Um, what's the best way to add audio to individual slides or to play audio throughout the, the slides? Sure, that's a question that I get often. And, and some of you guys might think there is an answer. And, and really, it's two things. People have said to me many times, how do I put audio to my slides? You don't want to think that way. Okay, you want to think, how do I put my slides to audio? All right, so not how do I put audio on my slides, it's how do I put my slides to audio. And what I mean by that is there is no way right now to take an individual slide and put an audio file to it, whether it be a, 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 you know, a, um, a, a sound bite, whether it be a kid talking, whether it be background music, there's nothing like that, right? Now, there are some workarounds. You could take the audio file put it in a video format, and then put that in your Google Drive, put it in YouTube, and then embed the video. We've seen that one done. There is a plugin out there from EdTech Team that claims, and I, I don't I'm gonna use that word the right way, claims to put video and audio and all this stuff into a slide over the course of multiple slides. And I like it. I, would, I, I, I endorse it. But really what it's doing is it's saying, when you hit the present button, play this audio file that happens to be in your Google Drive. And there's really not a lot of um, way of doing it yet. I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic um, add-on, really, um, mm -hmm. free. But really all it's doing is when I hit the present button, play this audio file. You can't do timing the way that you can on Keynote and the way that you can on PowerPoint. And I just got to think that that's just in the coding of the way slides works. Or, you know, because obviously it's a feature that many people ask about. But there's, right. there's got to be a reason why it doesn't happen. Okay. So the other way, and putting the slides to audio means get your presentation looking as perfect as possible, export your slides as images, and then mm -hmm. go into a movie, like, like iMovie, Final Cut, something like that. And then that way you're timing one slide to the course of an audio track. So don't okay. think of putting the audio on the slide. Go into a video application and put the slide 
which is really an image at that point, onto audio. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. There's another question. Is there a way to restrict student edit rights to just one slide in a, in a Google slide deck? So that's a great question. And really what that question is, it's a question about digital citizenship, right? I encourage mm -hmm. right. teachers to, to, you know, okay, look, in Google Classroom, you can say everybody gets a copy of, but I also recommend do activities throughout the year where everybody edits this same deck, right? Maybe you're mm -hmm. going to be doing a project and you're going to want to try something where everybody's taking notes on the project and they all have their individual slide or two slides or three slides. That really comes down to a question on digital citizenship. Sure. Um, do we have time for one more, or do we want to keep going? Keep going. Awesome. Yeah. So here we, here we go. Plenty, plenty more to go. My goodness here. All right. So the next thing here, and again, I'm going to stop here briefly, Peggy, and say everything about this presentation was crowdsourced, right? So here is a great example from Eric Kurtz. And Eric Kurtz is talking here about comic-centered film trips. And I saw the people put some links and things on the chat. Um, Again, 95% of this stuff is all crowdsourced. And after this is done, I'm going to ask you guys to share your examples, too, because I want to know how you guys are doing things, and I want to know what you guys are up to. Okay? So over here, we have this comic strip, right? And we have Robot and Penguin. And let me just hit the Present button, and, and Peggy, help me make sure that we're working here on everything. So here we are. And again, this is a comic strip. Now, don't look at the content so much as the creativity behind this. So I'm going to hit my little right arrow, and it says, hey, Penguin, what are you doing? The Penguin says, I'm just studying. And Robot says, so why do you have a book on your head? And of course the answer, everybody, is, well, it's for science class, so I thought osmosis might work. <laughs> everybody knee slapper out there, right? So what are we really doing here? Now we have a vocab term. And I've had teachers say, I don't have time to make one of these up for every one of the vocabs. And I said, no. You only have to make one of these. And then you challenge your students to create the other 55 vocab words that you do. Right? So you have your students make this up. You're going to notice, what do we have here? We have color theory because we've got you know, background colors. We have graphic finding. We have conversations. We have actions. We have transitions. We have all of these things in here. These are the skills that you're teaching. These are the ISTE standards for students, if you will. I saw somebody mention the standards question in here. Right? So, you know, literally, if you take a look at this slide here, you'll notice that this oval is literally thinking outside the box, right? So many of our kids don't understand that they can move outside the confines of our slide, which, again, digital citizenship, we're thinking outside the confines of our classroom. So think about that again, ways that we're using presentations not as a presentation and how we can do things. So. The next example that we want to talk about here is Jeopardy. Now, I don't want to go into Jeopardy. We've, we've been playing Jeopardy, but you can certainly download this and use it again. This is one of those amazing Eric Kurtz things. But here's what I'm going to say about Jeopardy. Many of us know that Jeopardy is you click on a number, and then there's an answer, and then you ask the question. But what happens if you incorporate video into it, right? Like, why not go around and go, to the, go through your school and find all your teachers and record your teachers? asking the answers, and then the kids, of course, have to say, you know, who is George Washington? So you could totally make a school-wide Jeopardy project using your phone, using video, adding the video into Google Drive. You can totally make this a personal project, and it's great for the beginning of the school year. It's great for the end of the school year. It's great for graduation. Heck, this is great for student yearbooks. Lots of good stuff that can be done here, all right? So that's kind of the Jeopardy idea. So I want to pause and go, where do we find all these things? Now, one of my favorite websites is Slides Carnival. If you've heard of Slides Carnival, give me a, a hand raise out there. Slides Carnival is a free template uh, repository where, and they're finding new things in here all the time. Like, this is all stuff. And all this is is Slides Carnival templates where, for instance, here's maps. Right? And if I want to download this as a PowerPoint, I can. They've really redone this over the last year or so. And if I want to download this as a slide theme, I certainly can. Now, the neat part about this is it has one slide deck that kids can use multiple things. Right? So here's a, here's a diagram. Right? Here's a chart. Here's a map. Right? So that's slide, uh, Slides Carnival. Fantastic. The one I find most people don't know about is this one here, Show Wheat. 
S-H-O-W-E-E-T. These are PowerPoint and Keynote decks that are themed. So for instance, this one here says Process Diagrams. Now, of course, we know that we can take PowerPoint and, and import PowerPoint into Google Slides. So this here is one slide deck that, as you can see, has all of these different themes, but it's diagram themes, right? So let me pull out another one here. Um, let's see, charts, diagrams, and objects. So I might grab something like this. This is amazing pie charts. I might grab this slide deck because all that I want is this image here, right? Because I like hearts, so I can make a quick diagram out of that. Or maybe over here, I like this little diamond shape thing. So I, I'm constantly on here. I even subscribe to the RSS feed for this because I always want to know when things are coming out. But like, I might take this slide here and just basically copy some of these images and put them into Google Slides, and now I've got an even more amazing presentation. So show it, S-H-O-W-E-E-T. It looks like I've got to correct the spelling here. Other things in here, the Microsoft Template Gallery is pretty cool. Slide Hunter. Um, Icon Archive is has been my favorite. Um, seven years ago, when I created the first TeacherCast logo, everything came from Icon Archive. You can look at all of these different things. Let's just say I pick Google Docs. Now I have a ton of Google Docs logos, Chrome logos, right? I can search over here by popular. And let's see, now I have all of these different icon sets. I use this stuff constantly. So you can check out Icon Archive. And of course, Canva is just amazing, right? Lots of good stuff here from Canva. So if you're looking for templates, again, don't try to reinvent the wheel. It's all here. Due to time, we're going to go a little bit quickly here, but you can certainly see digital scrapbooking is a great way to use it. This is actually a template that used to be on the old Google Slides template repository. I, I haven't been able to find it, so I'm kind of happy that I, 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 I snagged it here. But you can certainly use that for digital scrapbooking. Index cards. This is a no-brainer, guys. If I have this index card thing here, I can quickly make up these templates of my of my vocab words, right? I can, give out, I can give out blank ones of these through Google Classroom, and now everybody has a copy of this, right? Now, and I can go through and I can put photos in here where the kids now have to write around it. Again, video slide. I can do anything that I need to on here, citation. So in other words, through Google Classroom, you can give out this as a template, and your kids can be responsible for coming up with their own note cards. Invitations and posters. Right, so here's a great template here for invitations and posters. The nice thing is once you have one slide, right, you literally can just go paste, paste, paste on the left side, and now you've got multiple invitations for different students. Here is a children's book. Somebody mentioned ebooks earlier. Here's an example of an ebook for what you can do. This is everyone's favorite topic, the Bill of Rights. But you can see here that you know it's very, very easy for anybody to create a second or third page on this. And if I'm going too fast, it's just because I want to make sure that we have some time for everything. But again, you guys have access to all of these topics here. This is one of my favorites. This is, you're going to see a lot of this from the, the Eric Kurtz, from the Casey Bells. Um, this one here is Build a Jack-O-Lantern from Eric. But Casey also does a lot of refrigerator magnets. Right? So here are the directions. Right? And this whole thing is around taking the Jack-O-Lantern and writing about your jack-o'-lantern or your topic, right? Like you can put Mickey Mouse in here. You can put Iron Man in here, right? And then over here, you've got different things for your jack-o'-lantern so the kids can do a big copy and paste. I've seen this work well, again, as refrigerator magnets, um, jack-o'-lanterns, snowmen. It seems like every time we have a holiday, somebody comes up with the, you know, a similar concept with different um, thematic things. So definitely check that stuff out. Um, yeah, I see here the noun project. You can certainly find stuff. Refrigerator magnets, ABC books. We'll, we'll get to some of those things as we go through here. Um, and again, feel free to, to stop me anytime here, Peggy. These are called thinking slides. This is kind of a neat, right? You give your kids a diagram or maybe you give your kids the, the building outline and say, okay, we're going to draw the way to get out of the building in case of emergency. Right? So now here we're making, we're teaching the kids how to make little diagrams and points of view things. I think I'm going a little fast, but you get the idea here. 
Now, this is one of my favorite ones. This is a way to do video, right? Video on Google Slides is absolutely amazing because not only now can you do video on YouTube, but you can now put video into your, um, let's see, you can put video into your Google Slides, right? And Google Slides is my favorite video editor, right? Well, huh? What do I mean? Yes. YouTube is my favorite video editor. I can take this video here, and you're going to notice that when I do, it says format options. And when I click on format options, I now have this come up over here. I can now put a drop shadow on a video. But what I love and what teachers don't realize here is video playback. I now can say, I want this video to start at a certain time and end at a certain time. So let's say that I had a video that was 45 minutes long. If I gave that to my classroom in Google Classroom, they're going to look at a 45-minute video. If I put that video in Google Sites, it's going to be a 45-minute video. But if I made a one-slide slide deck that I could sit here and chop, I could now have a 45-minute video only be seen for three minutes or four minutes. And here's another way to do that, right? Like here we can compare and contrast two different videos of the same thing. And now we can talk about what do you like, what do you not like. They can come over here and they can comment on it, right? So there's a lot of things that we can do through video. And I've got a few posts on that on TeacherCast. But there's a, neat, a lot of neat things that you can do here through video. All right, moving forward. Color words, I think I got this one. I saw a couple shout-outs to Christine Pinto. I think I might have gotten that one from her. Recipes, this is something that you guys already have access to. Right? These are the normal Google Slides templates. So you can look at two different recipes, but this doesn't have to be recipes. This could be a template for your family vacation. Right? This could be a template for things that you want to do when you grow up. Right? You, you guys name the topics here. Lots of stuff for this kind of topic here. Same thing, we have photo albums. I believe this was also a native Google Slides template. Same thing for yearbooks. Now, I want to bring you to this one here because this is a way to teach web design. Now, we created this concept before new Google Slides existed. And here's the deal, right? If I ask you guys what is a website, everyone's going to have a different answer. But in reality, a website is nothing more than an online page with a navigation. And that's exactly what we created here. Here's an online page, right, because we hit the publish feature, and each of these links to different slides. So if I want to travel through Plymouth, I get this. So if I click on Overview, I get this. And all this is doing is just popping between slides. You've literally created a website through Google Slides. Now, what's the advantage of here? Safety and security, right? Your kids can make a website, quote unquote, and nobody needs to see it. It doesn't have to be published. You're not putting a domain name to it. It's all right here. And now you're teaching your kids how to do this literally from scratch. Now, of course, each of these can link out to many different things. But the idea is, you know, how do you teach coding? How do you teach programming, right? It's easy to say, let's open up new Google sites, and suddenly you have a website creation tool. But what happens if you don't even want to give your kids that? This project here was done in fifth grade a couple years ago. So this was absolutely fantastic. Because literally, we started with absolutely nothing, and the kids came up with a, a website project for themselves. And yes, it is very much like Choose Your Own Adventure books, right? Same, same exact kind of an idea here. All right, social media profiles, same idea. What happens if George Washington had a Twitter account? Could you imagine what would happen if the president had a Twitter account? So anyway, here is a template for all of these different things, right? And so here's one for Facebook also. Right, so in other words, just take it and change it around. Book reviews. This was one that I, a teacher came to me and said, I want to do book reviews. I, I found this template literally by typing in book review Google Slides template. And so now, very, very basic stuff. And I urge you, take these things, make them your own, right? Like this is just taking a, a graphic of a star and changing the background color of it. Real, I, by the way, I'm going to just pause for 30 seconds. In the chat room, are you guys getting some ideas of how you can use this? And if so, what are some of those ideas, right? Like, 
and someone just mentioned, this is such a simple idea, right? Absolutely. All we have to do is unlock the creative potential of each other. Storytelling. Here's a great one. I, I'm going to open up this one here. I urge you guys to try this out. This is the storytelling of Little Red Riding Hood. All right? And so here we have the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Now, there can be a few things. If I had, if I had present, now I've got a walk along that I can make to the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Or over here, I can now use this slide to do character developments. Right? Like I'm now asking my kids to describe what Little Red Riding Hood looks like. If I come to this slide here, I can now take these graphics and I can do what happened first in the story, what happened next in the story. And so now I'm creating an interactive worksheet. This is great on smart boards, right? Like if you're teaching kindergarten, you can have the kids come up on a smart board and use their fingers to move this stuff around. But right here, you've got a complete lesson all inside of one slide deck package, right? And we can use master slides for this stuff. And right, so now, now you're teaching everything, right? Like, so much potential in here, right? That again, you give this out through Google Classroom, you give it out through a couple of different links. Everything here is going to work out perfectly for you guys. Um, have you guys had a favorite template so far? If you have a favorite template, please let me know um, as I'm closing some of this stuff down here. 12.47. Peggy, how are we doing on time? So here's another one that I want to show you guys. This is magazine covers. I'm going to show you two quick magazine covers, and I want you to think about what's the difference here. Here's a time cover, right? It's clearly the whole face, right? And you can see that they put the guy's face behind the magazine words, right? So he, the, the, the image is behind everything. Here is another version of this where now you've got the character inside the words and he's in front of the logo and all that stuff. So what's the difference? Now I want you to go create your own, right? So now we're creating our own and now we're looking at this. Now we can talk about, again, color theory. Now we can talk about graphics. Now we can talk about, okay, can somebody read this stuff? So a lot of things that we can do here to help teach the kids how to do creative projects without really doing creative projects. We just don't have time right now for everything, Becky. Um, but right now, I, you know, use this video, right? Like this video here is going to show you a little bit about animations. And really the way that animations works is it's a giant flip book. So if we click on the T-Rex here, and I'm going to do this slowly so that way everybody sees things. Right now, I'm going to go next, next. And I hope this is refreshing okay for everybody. But the idea here is through cell animation, we can start to do characters. We can start to make this look like comic books. We can start to make stories out of this, right? So there's a lot of things that we can do here in the world of animation. And all this is doing is teaching, is teaching students how to do one slide after one slide after one slide, OK? So there's a lot of stuff in here, and I would urge you to check out the other courses that I have on TeacherCast University. Um, I have an entire animation thing. Maybe we can just do an animation day one day, Peggy, here, right? But I've got a, I've got a few things on this, and it literally is just like a flip book, right, of what you can do. And I think this is the last one here, Peggy. Then we'll have some time for questions. But here is the alphabet book. I had somebody uh, earlier mention this. But this is very, very basic, or this could be anything that has to do with your even most advanced topics, but ant, bumblebee. Here's a video about a bumblebee, right? Like, again, think about this in your geometry topics, having the, having the kids do something, write something, look at something, and then record their own video describing the topic is pretty invaluable. And by the way, that's a camel. So there's a lot of things that we can do here um, if we're looking at this stuff, Peggy. But I, I hope people here today got the ideas of what we can do. There's, of course, several other great opportunities here for things. You know, here's all of my favorite Google Slides add-ons. Check those things out. We have a lot of neat things here. But again, if you haven't had a chance to yet, teachercast.net slash 
creative Google Slides. You can, of course, find me on teachercast.net. And, you know, Peggy's done a wonderful job at all of this stuff. Please check it out. Um, you guys are going to have an opportunity to, to um, what's the word, to join us with all of this stuff. As I said, this presentation was completely crowdsourced. Um, you guys are going to be getting an email from me in about uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, asking for your feedback, but also asking for anything creative, right? So you're going to get an email from me that says, do you guys have a creative way of using Google Slides? Please let us know and please help us, you know, share other examples for here. So that is our presentation. Peggy, I'm going to open this up for questions and comments and let me see if I can come over here and get off of the application sharing. Peggy, what did everybody think? What, do, what was your favorite part, everybody out there? What did you guys learn today? Hello? I see lots of typing, Jeff. While they're typing, I will ask another question, a couple questions that came up. The sets that you had for uh, templates. Are they virus-free sites? I hope so. Yeah. Um, and for the interactive storytelling, did you make the empty squares a background image so they don't move when the kids are moving the images? So the, the good question, because that's something again. If, if if we had a whole hour for this, mm -hmm. I would I would go into all that stuff. All those images of the of the the, the dinosaur and then the Star Wars characters, those are all transparent images. Mm -hmm. So so the, the long form of that presentation there is teaching your students how to find transparent images and then bring them into the Google slide and then manipulate them as such. So and that's a good question. And we talk in there about you know you don't want to find an image that's a big blocky square. You want to find one that is transparent. And you can do that by typing in, you know, dinosaur space transparent image, and it'll just find transparent images for you. I think the question was referring to the Red Riding Hood storybook. Oh. Moving, moving those scenes. Oh, um, I don't know. The, the film strip kind of thing. Somebody gave me that template. I don't remember. I mean, okay. I don't know, I don't know okay. if maybe they had a worksheet that they cut out or something like that. Okay. Is it possible to do these activities with very limited technology in your classroom? Yes. It's just a matter of which ones you're going to do. If you've got limit, you know, limited technology, I wouldn't suggest trying to do animations. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you can do animations on a, on a Chromebook, right? Like it, it, right. It's, I, I'd love to get a definition for the term um, limited technology. Mm -hmm. Clearly, if you're just using a phone device, then some of these things aren't there. And some of these things are going to be better as teaching tools rather than student creating tools. Mm -hmm. Right. So as a teacher, the, that photo book at the end with the ant and the camel, you know, obviously the, the, the students aren't going to be making that, but, but they might. You know, first graders mm -hmm. can make a book like that. If you gave them mm -hmm. a few pages and a little bit of knowledge, a first grader could easily make that. Sure. Those were the questions that I captured. I don't know if anybody else has any questions. Oh, how would you set up learning stations in your room to provide more opportunities for kids to participate? And if so, is that a good idea? I think any time that you can put knowledge in the hands of the students, it's a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. Creating learning spaces is, is, would be, for me, one of those things that I would say, you know, show me what the room looks like, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes the learning station is putting a few desks together, and sometimes the learning station is, you know, go stand in, on the side of the room and you've got some activity going on. But any of these things can be completely adaptable for any situation. Um, do I have a preference between Google Slides and PowerPoint? Yes, I do. Um, I, I always am one of those weird people. I challenge myself. A lot of my professional slide decks have been created in PowerPoint. And then I export them, and then I put them into Google Slides, and I embed them on my website. Mm -hmm. um, Google Slides has that publish feature. Mm -hmm. right? So you can do things like the animations where it publishes and then it automatically goes. PowerPoint doesn't have that. I've talked to Microsoft a lot about that. And Microsoft's answer for animations is, you know, just make a movie out of it or export a movie. And you can't do that with the same easiness, right, as you can right. with the Google Slides. So they each have their opinions, but I, I love using the combinations of both, right? Again, as I showed you with that show wheat thing, right, like grab a, grab a template, 
mock it up in PowerPoint, stick it into slides, and go with it, right? Now, maybe you're not going to do that kind of an activity with your kids, but for your own uh, presentations, maybe you take the time to do something like that because you want a, a diagram or a graphic or something in there. Um, sometimes I take a PowerPoint deck and I bring it into slides to use so I can manipulate things, and sometimes I take PowerPoint and I do save to image so that's flat. Because, you know, mm -hmm. if, a, if a PowerPoint doesn't format the right way, you just export it by image and then you put it back up into Google. So that way, you know, everything is a one-to-one -one transfer on there. It's a good question. Any chance Google will be updating the slide app for iOS so it can I, have all the features? No. I, 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 because my, and my answer is simple. If it could be done, it would have been done. It is really hard to create a single platform that works on every single thing, right? right. Imagine, right. you know, again, your phone is thumb-based versus your mouse being click-based, right? You're, you're not going to have every single text option and crop. and every, It's just not going to happen. Um, so, you know, use your phone and your tablet to start things. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'll use Canva as a great example. Canva has a fantastic I, I, iPad and iPhone app, but I use that when I'm, you know, on the go just to get some ideas down. But I would never use Canva's mobile app as the end-all, be-all for graphic creation. I, I would then, you know, go to my desktop and I would finish the project. And the same thing. If you want to do some basic stuff, it's fine. But how many times have you ever been out somewhere and you needed to use the Google Slides app on your phone to do some major tweaking of things? It's, it's just not there. And it's, it shouldn't be, right? Because it's, it's thumb-based. It's made for a, a literally a bigger thumbprint than, than the click of your mouse. Mm -hmm. How do you evaluate students' work? What is more important, content, design, use of technology? Do you use rubrics? That's the TPAC question, right? Like, what are you going for? Um, I, I generally don't suggest grading students on their ability to do technology. Mm -hmm. You can, of course. I'm not saying you don't. But it's the curriculum, right? Like, that's why we started with learning about the Explore tool. By using that Explore tool, your kids automatically are making professional-looking slides. Okay. If you want to teach okay. them about the technology, then go do that kind of a lesson. But I would never give the kids a lesson where you're grading them on the, the look of the slide plus the amount of words. Because right, as soon as you do look of the slide, you can't grade them on how many words are on the slide. Mm -hmm. Those are two totally different things. So um, pick one. And you can, you know, every project can be different. And again, you don't, it doesn't, a grade doesn't have to be A, B, C, or D. I'm looking at Peggy's slide right now for questions, and I'm going, okay, that's a nice looking slide. But I'm not going to say, Peggy, that's a nice looking slide. I'm just kind of taking mental notes on where my skill, where, the, where the students' skills are, and then adjusting my next lesson to that. Mm -hmm. Are all these ideas for slides possible on Chromebooks? Absolutely. Because it, it slides and slides and slides. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, Jeff. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will take it from here. Oh, I'm sorry, Paula had her hand up. Paula wants to take the mic. Go ahead, Paula, and then Peggy. Hey, Jeff and everybody. Not hearing, huh? Because I wasn't, forgot to press the talk button. Silly We're me. good. But anyhow, hi, Jeff. Hi. Nice to hear your voice. Just wanted to give a quick example of what I do with limited tech. I have about a two-to-one ratio that I've been building up over the years, getting very close to one-to-one. -one. But I always like to put my kids on in pairs or teams of three anyhow at the beginning of the year because they can help each other out. So on Thursday, which was their first day of school, I did a quick intro to Google Drawing, gave them the basics, put them on the Chromebook, set a timer for five minutes. They were each to work on creating a robot. The first person got five minutes, and the second person got five minutes. And they worked on the same 
um, Google drawing. And it was so great to watch them and to see their excitement. And I put an example in there of what they created on their first day of school. So they are able to take it away and go from there. So love it. Love lots of everything you shared today, Jeff, and learned so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Paul. It's so nice to hear from you. Oh, wow. I, I love the Google Drawing template. Everybody should check that out. So what I what I would suggest from here, Paula, and, and, and if you're looking at this or if you're, you know, what, let's just do it this way. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Peggy, can I have a couple more seconds here, or are we on time? Go right ahead. All right, I'm going to go back to screen share here, and if if I can do this, I'm going to do this here. Let's see. Uh, share desktop, share. All right, are we all looking at Paula's uh, thing? Give me a thumbs up or something here, Paula. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to slide, uh, slides.google.com. All right, I'm going to open up a new slide deck here. Okay, and while that's coming out, I'm going to take this, and you'll notice here that this is all different pieces. Okay, this is all different pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to not collect these because I don't want those, but I want everything here. I'm going to right-click. And I'm going to hit copy. And let's see. I, if I have the permissions, I'm going to do this over here. I'm going to come over here to this slide. I'm going to click on blank. And uh, it didn't work. Okay. That's okay. You get the idea. What I want you to do, Paula, is I want you to, to copy this over here into Google Slides. And yeah, now I'm here we have a square. Permissions real quickly. Hold on. Uh, sure. So you here, want here's what? Edit? You want edit? Okay, there you go. Uh, I'll put the link back in. T Hold on. R. Let's see. Refresh. Okay. And here's the link again. And that one Let's should see. give you edit rights. Refresh. There we go. All right. So I'm going to copy everything here. I'm going to use shift. This is my big thing with Google. It's shift does it, not control does it. I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to go to group. So now this is not individual things. Now this is one thing. Now that gives me a couple options. I can shrink this proportionally, right? Let me get rid of that. But I can also now take that, copy that with Command C or Control C, and I can put that into here. I can now shrink this down proportionally, right? So now I have my little person. So I've created my person in drawings, and now I have this here. I'm going to come over here to the left. I'm going to hit Duplicate Slide and I'm going to move my figure. I'm going to hit duplicate slide, and I'm going to move my figure, and I'm going to hit duplicate slide, and I'm going to move my figure. Now, very quickly, Paula has taken her little drawing, and now we've made an animated character out of it. See what I'm doing here, Paula? And so now what we can do is I'm going to come over here and say... Star Wars background image. And if I'm going too quickly, I know it's already 1 o'clock. But I'm going to click over here, open this graphic up. And this is all stuff that I teach my kids, right? I'm going to do copy, copy, copy image address, right here, copy image address. Come back over here, go to backgrounds, image, choose, by URL. Ugh. You get the point. Um, so sometimes these always don't work. Copy image address. Let's put stuff over here. There we are. Now if I click hit done, it's just going to be on the one slide. If I hit add to theme, now I have here. So now I've quickly added a background to the theme, and I have my character running around. Right? So now you understand a little bit more about the animation and how to get backgrounds and how to make characters interact with each other. So that's a way to take this little drawing here and then really expand the curriculum and say, okay, now do that. We've done this with cell division, where the kids have had to make the cell animate into you know, one cell into two. We've done this with dinosaurs, with, you know, with Star Wars characters, anything that you want on here. And uh, Peggy, there's, you know, there's just a few other things that we can do together here.
Again, thanks so much, Jeff. Um, we'll turn the mic over to Peggy. No. Clint's asked, then do you export as a video? If you click okay. on this is okay, so if you're if you're still in your slides, you can go to file publish mm -hmm. and then you can export you know you can it gives you a link you're publishing to a link okay I don't want to do it on here because of the refresh rates right. um, I do have stuff on TeacherCast. in fact, I have it on the on the show notes post about how to do animations okay again, thanks so much. I think people learned a, a lot today. Thank you for having me. This has been fantastic. Wow, Jeff. My mind is just spinning with just the tip of the iceberg of the amazing ideas you shared with us today. So thank you so much. And the recording will be up in a few hours. So if anyone wants to share it with someone else, or if you want to just go back and watch it again and pause and try things out, I invite you to do that. Next week, we're going to have a great presentation from Sharon Davison, who's going to be doing some really neat things about teaching global goals in kindergarten. I know you're going to enjoy that. If you have primary teachers, obviously, you can use them in more than kindergarten. So if you have primary teachers that you think might enjoy that, invite them to come and join us. Then um, we're still finalizing our August 25th show, but I do want to remind you that we won't have a show on September 1st because that is Labor Day weekend in the United States. And many teachers, even if you haven't started school yet, will be away that weekend. And I know some of you have already started school. So thank you all so much for joining us today, and I hope you have an awesome weekend. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's open to the public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher for the month at this site. You can nominate yourself as a featured teacher as well. All the recordings are in iTunes View. All the video recordings are there, as well as YouTube. So there are two video archive places besides the website for past sessions. You can request a professional development certificate, get it printed out with your name, and Patty Ruffing sends these out and also has your name printed on the certificate. You do that when you fill out the survey for the session. At the bottom, you'll find that information for the PD certificate. Please make sure it's a, a personal email address that you use to request your certificate. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. You can take the direct link or the link in the chat or the link from the live binder. Special thanks again to Jeff Bradbury, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate, to our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>